Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel for a new military video. Today argument is a UAV, Unmanned Aerial Vehicle, where we will analyze the MQ Predator family. The MQ Predator UAV family, or to be more precise UCAV, Unmanned Combat Aerial Vehicle, is a family of drones adopted by United States of America. As the name says, we don't have a pilot inside, but they are remotely controlled from the ground. Even considering that, don't think they are small like the drones you can buy yourself. They are quite large and similar in size to real airplanes. But let's start checking all the details to better understand what I mean. The first machine of this family, the MQ-1 Predator, was introduced in 1996, with the first flight in 1994. The manufacturer is a General Atomics Aeronautical System, it's the same for all the models we will see later, and it received the latest upgrade in 2009 with the MQ-1C Grey Eagle. The cost is around $31 million. The first evolution of the MQ-1 Predator, the MQ-9 Reaper or Predator B, was introduced in 2007 with the first flight in 2001. Of course, as I said before, the manufacturer is the same and it received the latest upgrade in 2020 with the MQ-9B Sky Guardian version. Here the cost is quite lower, $15.9 million, mostly thanks to the improvements in the technology and also the reduced production cost. The last UAV that we will analyze today of this family is the MQ-20 Avenger or Predator C. Again, we have the same manufacturer. It was introduced in 2016 with the first flight in 2009. The latest upgrade, the Avenger ER or Extended Range, will arrive very soon, probably this year. Also here we have a cost around $15 million. After this first category, we have an overall idea about the machines we analyzed today, but really far to a proper comparison. So let's move to the next category and analyze something more juicy. Of course, we will start with the MQ-1 Predator. It has a length of 8.5 meters, an height of 2.1 meters and a wingspan of 17 meters. It has an endurance of 25 hours, so it can fly for almost a complete day without refueling, and a range of 2,000 kilometers, with a service ceiling of 8,840 meters. For the power plant, we can find a turboprop with 165 HP of power, and it can reach a maximum speed of 309 kilometers per hour, and a Increase speed of 220 km per hour. What about the first update, the MQ-9 Reaper? It has a length of 11 meters, an height of 3.8 meters and a wingspan of 20 meters. It's already quite larger compared to the previous Predator. We have an endurance between 18 to 48 hours depending on the payload, a range of 1,900 km and a service ceiling of 15,000 meters, so it can fly much higher than the previous version. For the power plant we can find also here a turboprop with 900 HP of power. Also here we have a huge improvement in the power plant. The maximum speed is 482 km per hour with a cruise speed of 313 km per hour. I think it's quite clear how the Reaper is a huge improvement compared to the previous Predator. But let's also check what we have for the Avenger. It has a length of 12.5 meters, an height of 3.9 meters and a wingspan of 20.1 meters. The endurance also for this one is between 18 to 23 hours with a range of 2000 kilometers or more and a service sailing of 18,000 meters. For the power plant we can find this time a turbofan with 17.7 kN of power. It can reach a maximum speed of 745 kilometers per hour and a cruise speed of 650 kilometers per hour. So also for the avenger we have a quite good improvement. The dimensions are almost the same. It's just slightly larger but not so much. The endurance is a bit reduced but we have almost the same range, an higher service ceiling, a much improved power plant and very importantly maximum and the cruise speeds that are almost doubled compared to the previous Reaper and three times more compared to the Predator. In the next category we can analyze the avionics and weights. For the Predator avionics we can find a starlight reader, electro-optical sensor and infrared sensors. The Predator has an empty weight of 1450 kg and a maximum takeoff weight of 1640 kg. 
kilograms with a payload of only 360 kilograms. What about the Reaper? For the avionics we can find a Lynx 2 radar, a CVU Marine Search Radar and an MS-TS multispectral targeting system. The Reaper empty weight is 2223 kilograms, almost double compared to the Predator, and the same for the maximum takeoff weight, 4760 kilograms, while for the payload we have 1400 kilograms, four times more compared to the previous Predator. For the Avenger avionics, probably the biggest improvement is the stealth design. In fact, this drone has stealth features that reduce the radar cross-section and make it less detectable. Another very good improvement here is the ASA Wide Area Radar, then we have the same links to radar present on the Reaper, and the MSIS, the Multispectral Imaging Sensor. The Avenger empty weight is 3200 kg, with a maximum takeoff weight of 8255 kg, almost double to the Reaper. Another important improvement is here for the payload, in fact we have 1600 kg internal and 2900 kg external. Why we do have this difference? Because this aircraft has an internal bay to keep the stealth design. So if we want to use only the internal bay and keep the stealth design, we have 1600 kg that is already higher compared to the previous Reaper. But if we want to lose the stealth design and we want to use also the external payload, we have 2,900 kg additionally. Also here a very good improvement compared to the previous Reaper and a huge difference compared to the Predator. For the fourth and the last category we can analyze and compare the armament. Let's start as usual with the MQ-1 Predator. We have four hard points under the wings that can carry air-to-air -air missiles, the IM-92 Stinger, air-to-surface missiles like the Hellfire or Griffin, and the guided bombs, the 20kg Viper Strike. As we have seen in the previous category, we don't have a large payload, so of course we cannot transport so many of these weapons. For example, we can have a maximum of four air fires. But now let's check the Reaper. Here we have 7 hard points, even if only 6 are adopted for the weapons, the 7th and the middle one on the fuselage is only adopted on the Sky Guardian variant to increase the number of sensors, so we don't have weapons but is mostly for reconnaissance. While for the weapons we can not only find the Stinger missiles but also the Sidewinder. Then for the air to surface missiles we have the classical fire and the brimstone, while for the guided bombs we have a huge improvement, in fact we have 230 kg kilograms GBU-12 Poway 2 and 230 kilograms GBU-38 JDM, Joint Direct Attack Munitions. As we have seen before, the payload was increased for the Reaper and with it also the number of weapons it can transport. And what about the Avenger? Here we can find 6 hard points under the wing and one internal bay that we mentioned before. So again remember that if we use the internal bay only we keep the stealth features, if we want to use also the external hard points of course we don't have the stealth feature anymore. Or actually we have them but they are reduced. What about the weapons? We can find air to air missiles, the IM-9 Sidewinder, air to surface missiles, the Hellfire, and many kind of guided bombs. We have the same power wave bombs we have seen for the Reaper, but also the 200 kg GBU-16 power wave 2 and 1000 kg GBU-24 power wave 3. Same for the JDM, we have the same present on the Reaper, but also the GBU-31 900 kg and the GBU-32 450 kg. In addition to them we can also find the 129 kg GBU-39 SDB or small diameter bombs. Now that we have analyzed the main specifications of these three models, what do you think about them? Maybe especially the Predator and the Reaper look very similar from the outside if you don't check the information about them. But now what do you think? They are really so similar? And the Avenger? The Avenger maybe in dimension is similar to the Reaper, but in the performance completely different also here. As a fast recap we have the Predator that is uh, very small, we don't have many weapons, the payload is reduced. Then we have the Reaper that was improved in every aspect. It's larger, we have a more powerful engine, higher payload, we can transport more weapons and also more kind of weapons. And finally we have the Avenger. We can find the stealth technologies adopted also on the most modern fighters. Also for the radar we can find an Aiza radar for example. Little upgrades here and there for the range, service sailing, huge improvement in terms of maximum and the cruise speed. And I really like how they managed to keep the same payload of the previous 
previous repair with only the internal bay. So also if we want to keep the silt design and use only the internal bay, we have even a little more payload compared to the repair. And this is something very important to take into consideration because even if you want to use the Avenger like you do with the repair, so without the silt features, you have a much higher payload. And that's all for today, that's all. I hope you enjoyed the video. If yes, remember to leave a thumbs up. And as usual, let me know in the comments if you agree or not with me or if I made any kind of mistake. So let me know. As a fast reminder for who is new here on the channel, I am an adult fan of Lego and I build these machines with the famous Lego bricks. You can already find, for example, both the Predator and the Reaper and very soon will arrive also the Avenger. So check also the playlist where you can find all my Lego creations. You can find them clicking in the right up corner or checking the video caption and there you can also find the playlist with more videos like this one if you liked this military video check also the others maybe you can find something else you like and that's all see you again next week with a new video bye